17 it breaks. Right. Okay? No, so on bar 17 it breaks. The fact of the matter is, is that it's breaking the five minute high. Right. Okay? Now me personally, I would even potentially anticipate an enter on that break right there with my stop right underneath here because it's safe to anticipate at that point because I got a low and then a higher low. And my stop is fairly close by. So then what I would look for is, is what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get in early and then potentially sell into the break when it comes because I know that it's going to make a move fade move higher. So for me anyway, I just look for a five minute high break. If I get any kind of clue, and like Animal actually showed a great clue here, there is the, you got your moving average, you got your failure to break down, which is that failed sell setup, and then you have the break here, okay? And, and it doesn't matter if it does it one time, two times, three times. I actually like when they sometimes make a descending wedge. Um, it's not as clear, right? Because now your stop's gonna be even further away. But when it makes a move up, that's clear air that can be tri quickly traversed, and then it makes another move higher. I call that, you know, Kenny and I have been playing that since uh, 1998. <laughs> um, it's called the check mark play. It looks like a check mark. Like a Nike sign, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just do it. Just do it. That's right. So what's yeah. your, um, can I ask what your like win ratio is on that play? Well, so like my, my win ratio is not like great because well, my it's all numbers game for me. That's why I risk a little bit more. And so for me, batting average on a great month would be about 60%, which is like a great month. On a usual month, I'll probably bat around 50, 55%. Because again, if I'm making two to one on every single trade, it's a no-brainer, right? right? It's a no-brainer. So I'll be more around the 50, 55%, and that'll be considered a great month, right? But a lot of months, I might be at 45 to 50%, but it's still gonna be profitable because again, if I'm losing 1,000 on a trade, if I'm making 2,000 on a winning trade, the numbers will always be in your favor. So I think the biggest thing for every trader is not to focus on increasing their win rate, it's more, to keep your winners at least two times your losers. Because that way it, it's impossible to lose. Because you know, anybody can throw darts on like a you know, Wall Street Journal. <laughs> somebody <laughs> wrote that on, on, uh, on here, I throw darts. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, so if someone even throws darts, you, you, even you have 50% chance, right? Let's say he picks a stock, I pick a stock. We both have 50% chance of making money, right? 50% chance, but he might get out at like, let's say, it moves up 10, 20 cents in his favor, he might get out, take his profit, I might be still in it, waiting for a bigger move. That's what I think differentiates like people who make money from those who don't. It's the winners to losers ratio to setups, right? High frequency trading, uh, I think for me, it doesn't really play that big of a part. Occasionally you'll get, you know, shakeouts or like where it moves down that you just get taken out of. But over the, over the time, what matters is like, a losing trade is a losing trade, you know? If I lose, I lose one arm. That's how I think about it. I lose one R. I can lose five trades in a row, I'm down five R. But let's say two trades or three trades go in my favor, two R each, I'm making six R's, giving me net profit of one R, which will be a thousand bucks at the risk level. So for me, I'm playing more a numbers game. Let me ask you another question. You, how many do you put on a day? You said like three or four? Yeah, so on an on a active day, I'll be trading five to six trades, mm -hmm. right? On a regular day, it'll be more on two to three. So are you just mostly relying on your stops then? Like how often will you let something run if it's really good? Or right. So are you busy looking at your other ones? So like or a non-earning non season, I'll just do two to one and walk away. But let's say it's stocks reporting earnings, right? It's earnings season. Then stocks are gonna probably go up much higher. In which case what I do is I put a nine period exponential moving average on the one minute or five minute chart. Mm -hmm. And then I just wait till it breaks. So I'll just get in, I'll put my stop loss. I'll put a 9 EMA on the chart, on a 5 minute chart. Mm -hmm. As long as it's above it, I'll just stay in the whole position. And when it breaks the 9 EMA, I'll just get on out. On a 5 or a 1? I'll, I'll do it on a 5 minute. Because on a 1 minute chart, it can break really quickly. Right. Right? So 5 minute chart, you're giving it the room. The issue with that is, you've got to have real balls of steel. Because you might get in a trade, right? And it might go up like big time in, in your favor, right? So now you're up five, six hours, all right? So whatever, if you're risking 100 bucks, you're up 600 bucks in like a few minutes. But you still gotta be in it because the 90 minutes is still down here. Sometimes they could all come all the way back down 
and you'll be out break even or you'll lose your profits or even lose money. So it takes really good nerves of steel to be holding a stock for a long period of time. Right, so it all depends on your psychology. Some traders are patient. One guy that I'm coaching, he just hold, he gets in, and he just doesn't do anything all day long. At 3:55 p.m., he exits his position, regardless of where it is. So that's what some people do if you're patient. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned the psychology thing. I think the fact that you think about it in R's instead of how much money I'm making or losing mm -hmm. probably helps to make you not feel either yeah. greedy or like always really focus scared. on the rules. You got to focus on the process. Mm. Not about the money. The money is a result of following a process that works. Every time I focus on money is when I've taken the biggest losses. Exactly. So, because if you think about just like, that's why we use our units, not because it's some great concept, but because it eliminates your attachment from like the money, right? Yeah. If you're thinking in terms of R's, you'll just be thinking, oh, I lost one R. Oh, I lost one R. Oh, I lost one R. Someone right. asked, what's your holding period? Well, on a day trade, it'll be like anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour max usually, because if it's two hours, I mean, either it's going to hit it or it's going to not work. So this is the trade, this, this seminar is on gap trading, somebody just asked. Yeah, this seminar is on everything. We're just getting started. You're missing out. That's <laughs> it. That's it. You have to catch us next time. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anybody else have any questions for Animal? Because I know he has a, a dinner to go to. Yeah. Uh, any questions? Enjoy your dinner. No, thanks. <laughs> it's a good steak place, too. Oh, damn. <laughs> next time. <laughs> don't move your stop loss up, you don't follow the stop loss So up. I personally don't because I just feel the more you detach yourself from the trade, the better it's going to play out. But a lot of traders, what they do is they say, oh, if it moves up like, you know, one to one, I'll bring my stop to break even. Or if it moves up a little bit, I'll raise my stop under that. Most often what ends up happening is like, you, you'll get in. Right, well, use the black one. Yeah. Somebody asked if you use VWAP too, so yes, that. VWAP answer. I use, but that's for another time. Yeah, that's so, the next session. Yeah. What's the VWAP? Volume weighted <laughs> average price. Kenny will talk yeah. a little bit about oh, it. Oh, I thought, I thought yeah. you meant like an app called Weave. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> you move your stats up or something. <laughs> what? No, it's the VWAP. Because the stock will go up this much, and people put their R, oh, I'm up a little bit, I'll raise my stock from here to here. They go break even just because it feels comfortable to go at break even. But then it, what happens is it comes back down, they get tagged break even, and the stock ends up higher. Later in the day, you're like, damn it, you know, I just messed up a great trade. And it causes all sorts of psychological issues. And when you start raising stocks, for me personally, I'll tell from my experience is that I was just raising stocks just because I felt like it, because there wasn't a strategy. And every time you raise your stock, arbitrarily or based on something, you're, you're basically trying to optimize or beat the system. And if you track it, like what I, tell my traders is like you track it on a spreadsheet what you make raising the stocks and managing the trade versus if you just sold at two hour what would you make after three months if you keep a track of what you made versus what just selling at two hour made you'll end up noticing this will almost always beat every single trader every single month because the more you try and touch the trade the more I think you mess it up either raise it too quickly or you you know you get tagged and you get taken out and the stock moves up higher well, I will say this whatever you do you should do consistently yeah yeah, and I can imagine if you have six trades on, all on the one minute chart, to try and move your stops up yeah. and like no, keep track of it, just be you insane. Saying, mm -hmm. You were saying that when you were going to let the, the trade run, whatever that situation was, and you were up 5R, you wouldn't consider moving your stop loss at that point. I, I was, I was. So that's where people mess up. Like, I was up 5R in a trade, okay? And I moved my stop loss because I was like, man, I don't want to give all this back. So I moved it at like plus 1R. So either way, I'm gonna make one R. Stock came down, took me out one R, and then ended up the day like much, much higher. Then I was like, I just messed up my system. Because if I just followed my system, I would have made 10 times more, right? So everything you do, make sure you are tra keeping track in a spreadsheet, like you versus whatever else management you're trying to do. Because a lot of times what's even happened is that I'll be up six hours in a trade, right? I, it'll come all the way back down, close to even stopping me out, but then it holds the stop loss and then ends the day up like freaking 10 hours, right? So that happens a lot of times as well. So you gotta make sure you're tracking it. That is the biggest thing I can like tell anybody. You gotta track. Like if you're not tracking your trades, you're probably doing yourself a disservice. And if you track it, you'll always find a consistent approach. Like as Mike said, if you do the same thing over and over, the numbers will play itself out. You know, you only need to win 40, 50% of the time at 2R to make money. 
So if you do the same thing over and over, after a month, after three months, this is gonna make way more money than a person trying to kind of optimize it, right? I've tried so many things, tracking it for like years. Oh, what if I move my stop at break even at one R, or maybe I sold a third at three R and then you know do this. Every time, like a simpler approach will always make you more money. That's my personal opinion after tracking it for like years. Just do same thing on every single trade. Every Treat every trade like it's the same same stock, right? And don't worry about the stock. A lot of times I don't even know the names of the stocks that I trade. So, let me ask you one other, so you, this is your primary strategy and you do this only in, in the very beginning of the morning. Yes, this is only good for, if you're playing it on a one minute chart, it's only good for like 9.33 to 9.40. But you might find this up on a five minute chart, in which case it'll work just as well. And so then the rest of the day you do swing trades or you- yeah, The rest of the day I'm just managing trade. like long term portfolio. So I manage like my portfolio for my family uh, and some relatives, so which is a pretty good portfolio. I don't take outside uh, capital or investors capital. So I manage their money, which is more long term. And I take percentage of their profit. So that's more with let's say three to five year time horizon, right? So like right now I'm in Amazon and a bunch of different stocks. So that, that's stuff that in the long term, which will have a whole different strategy for that. That involves options too, right? Yeah, you can use options to mitigate risk and uh, yeah. hedge your position. So that's the day trading strategy. Um, what I'll do is after this meetup, I'll send you guys a video. It's like a 30 minute video that I have on YouTube, which basically covers only this setup in like way more detail, showing you like live examples mm -hmm. of uh, positions. Yeah, I'll send you the, so, I'll send you everybody's information. Right, sounds good. So on that note, um, any questions? Otherwise, I'm going to hand it over to Mike. Okay. So what, well, I had one question. One question. What, uh, what um, days are you like available? Like, like just to like talk and like, uh, like if anyone has like questions, because I know you're running out today. Right. So um, what you could do is uh, come to the next meetup because Amo will be back. Yes. Yeah. So it's like a, it's like a month from now, right? It's one month, but you yeah. can he'll he'll it's send you his information. Yeah. So in the meantime, what you could do is just. Go to the website um, and just mention you met me at the meetup so they don't charge you for like the trial or anything like that. Okay. So come into the trading room, uh, which is Monday to Friday. Okay. We do every day from 9.30 till 4 p.m. Eastern where I'm actually gonna be trading live. Uh, you'll see my screens while I'm trading it. Okay. You'll see my audio while I'm talking. And you'll also see me post stuff that, hey, XYZ long at 10, stop loss 980, target 1040. So I'm posting my stuff before it actually triggers, right? And before I'm actually I'm in it myself. So we're pretty much getting it as a team in a way. So that's what we do, and uh, just email us. Say you met up at the meetup, so it's yeah, sure. with like a free trial for that. You can join and then you could talk to him. He'll talk to you off offline if that's what you want to do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks, man. All right. Thanks. Guys. All right. Thank you. Man. I know to Mike. Everybody, give him a round of applause. Thank you. We'll see you next month. See you next month. <laughs> Thanks. Enjoy your steak. <laughs> I will sure. <laughs> If you want to take a picture, is that we don't have to make a photocopy? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Del Frisco. You do that after, at the end. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it in words. Um, I'm going to talk for about 10 minutes about gaps in general, and, and then I'm going to hand it off to uh, my longtime trading buddy, none other than Mr. Kenny Glick. And he's feels like talking about it. Because that's how he rolls.